Hey everyone, Docwell here, and welcome to another video. Today's video is going to be the mid-tier list for patch 7.32b, and like I said in the last one, you know, they might release a C patch before the last chance qualifier, but unless they do it this week, it probably won't be coming because there's only like three weeks before the qualifier, um, so just keep that in mind. But regardless, this is probably going to be the meta in any case, they might, you know, release that C patch, but it might just be small nerfs to things that are strong. We'll just see how it goes. But as always, before we jump into it, I usually get my statistics from the Trends tab or Dota, um, Dota Buff or uh, also Dota 2 Pro Tracker. So I look at all those stats as well as the um, pro games from the recent qualifiers for TI that just happened. And then I kind of mash all that together, put my opinion in there a little bit as well. So that's how I, how I arrive at this list. So without further ado, let's just jump into the S tier. So the first S tier hero is actually going to be Tinker. So obviously everyone hates when this hero is really good. And I like playing Tinker. I can play Tinker a decent bit, but I actually don't really like Tinker ever since they changed um, and removed the March and gave him Defense Matrix. I just don't really like how the hero plays. It's not really my style, and I'm not a huge fan of it. Uh, I almost just find this ability to be rather useless. <laughs> um, it's just almost this... It's okay, but like the fact that they gave him free Boots of Travel is more of a thing that makes this hero viable. But in any case... Um, what they did to this hero is they changed it in a kind of an interesting way, which I think is pretty good. So they made it that if your ultimate, your refresh, your rearm, gets interrupted, it's now on cooldown for like six or seven seconds, whatever it is, eight seconds maybe. Um, we can just look at it here. Uh, does it say? Channel time... Yeah, 8, 7, and 6 based on the uh, level that you're at. So yeah, I mean, that's a pretty cool change because then it makes it not like you're just sitting in the trees, you know, getting stunned late game constantly and then just keep refreshing, 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 getting out with like 1 HP. So that is kind of a cool thing that they did to the hero, um, which makes it a little bit less annoying. But then they buffed it in some other ways that makes it more um, viable, which is like lower mana cost on laser, I believe. And then they changed some of the cooldowns to make them lower on his teleport and even his rearm. So that just makes the hero, as long as you're not getting caught, like it punishes you for getting caught out. But then if you don't get caught out and you're a really good Tinker player, it makes it even better. So this hero, just like Tinker has been ever since they changed his ability, removed um, his March of the Machines, this hero is all about fighting, just like getting your blink early and then just going around the map, like constantly lasering people and fighting. His farm, he doesn't farm as fast, but like late game, this hero just cannot be counted out. You get obviously like uh, Blink, you get your, you know, you can go the Shiva's build if you want. I'm not the hugest, like the biggest fan. I'm not a huge fan of that. That's just like my play style. I like the Ags. I like the Sheep Stick. But yeah, like late game with the refresh and the Sheep Stick and jumping around and lasering people. It's just, this hero is broken. Like when this hero is good, it's broken and it's so annoying to play against. And that's Tinker. Hey, it's a Tinker patch. It is what it is. So if you're a Tinker player, look to try to play this hero um, in the mid lane. And then next for the S tier, we have Bat Rider. So it always seems like this hero comes back. It's like this, yeah, there's this hero, exactly there's Io, the there's Chen, there's Enchantress, and I think there's like uh, um, Elder Titan. All these heroes, for whatever reason, Spectre's kind of that way, but they've recently nerfed Spectre a lot. All these heroes seem to always have some method of coming back into the meta no matter what happens. The hero gets nerfed into Oblivion, they change how the hero works, and then, you know, lo and behold, they come back and are A or S tier. They're really good in pro pro games because of the nature of the hero. Um, like, all those heroes plus Bat Rider. It's just kind of insane how this hero works. And now they changed it again. They keep changing the hero. I don't know what they're doing. They're trying to find some, I guess, like, happy medium or, like, good place for it to be. But basically, Sticky Napalm now does damage um, as well, which is interesting. Um, and I think the hero was already decent, and now they just kind of, like, buffed it, and now it's, like, S tier again. <laughs> it's the same hero it's always been. It's just kind of, they changed a little bit of how it works. Um, it still is really good at, like, if you know how to play Bat Rider and you're just, like, jumping in on people, you know, you're running them down, you're killing people early. Uh, it's still the same kind of thing, but more and more they've allowed this hero to become also a farming hero, so you're not like 100% reliant on killing everybody. You can also farm and get your items, get your BKB, boots of travel, blink, all that kind of stuff, um, and you don't have to be 100% reliant on killing people, but I will say, even though I'm putting this S tier, even though this is a really good hero, and I'm just going to say that it's a really good hero, it is probably only good if you're a really good bat rider player and you're like higher mmr because you are reliant on like diving people like abusing your firefly and the damage you do and you do have to know like how to push the limits of this hero and your team sort of sometimes has to coordinate around you like even though you can farm you don't just want to be sitting in the jungle like farming you want to be pushing out lanes you know being really annoying on the map for the first 20 30 minutes um and just being kind of nuisance is hard to deal with here and if you're not doing that he's just kind of a lasso bot and it doesn't feel that good so even though he's a great hero he's s tier um he might not work as well in pubs especially at lower mmr so just keep that in mind but that that is s tier these heroes are just out and away broken so that's why i'm putting them in s tier um right now because just based on the pub win rates and like what's happening in pubs you see these two heroes are just insane so that's tinker that's bat rider that's the s tier 
Next, we're going to move on to A tier. So the first tier we're going to look at here is Lena. So I have been a little bit wrong about Lena. Lena's a hero of mine that I like to play. I like to play Lena um, if I'm play, playing mid. Um, and I kind of didn't like the change they made a few patches ago when they changed the passive and how it works to from casting spells to just hitting creeps. I wasn't a huge fan of it, but then they buffed it like once or twice to make the duration a lot longer, which I think they needed to do. And I wasn't 100% convinced that it was enough to make the hero viable, but it turns out it is. It feels so much better now. Um, with the long duration on your passive um, that it doesn't like before it felt super weird to have to go and back it like you're pushing a lane then you have to go to the jungle to like you know cast a, an ability on the creeps in the jungle and then if you're trying to buy shadow blade and gank it feels like you never have stacks up so unless you're ganking like in a creep wave it just feels like you never get the attack speed to kill people it was just a really weird mix but now because the duration is longer on the passive it feels really really good you can actually play the hero it's very viable um it dominates the lane so that's the other big thing is um the good change regardless even in the past patches was the change to the passive means you can just like click q on the wave one time and if it hits the enemy hero you almost have like max stacks and it's really good in that way so this hero just dominates lane, has insane attack range, and then can scale really well. The other thing about the hero is, I would say in all pubs, you should probably go right-click build, but you can also go magic damage build as well, which is like a new build that they've sort of introduced, which makes this hero even more viable. Now that you have kind of two ways to build the hero, that makes it even better. So that's kind of why I'm putting it in A tier, because now you have the magic damage build, now you have the right-click build, even though the magic damage build sort of also you know, incorporates right-clicks as the hero does, but you have these two builds that are viable. They buff the um, duration of the passive, and that's what makes this hero really good right now. Next, we have Tiny. Tiny's just Tiny. Um, so uh, there's nothing super special about Tiny. He's just kind of the same hero as he's been for a long time now. Um, he was obviously a carry for a little bit there, and they changed him, and now he's more of a mid and a forward position. And he's just still the same mid and forward position that he's always been. There's nothing super different about him. There's nothing crazy about him. Uh, the only real change or new thing, as opposed to like what's been you know for years with Tiny, is that he, know, he now can rush ags a little bit you know faster like maybe he'll still go probably echo saber or blink dagger that kind of stuff but then you probably can get an early ags on the hero and you do actually do a lot of damage in an aoe it's very viable to dish out a lot of damage like defending towers defending high ground um you just kind of avalanche somebody and then if you're in the trees you just click your um ags on them and they just like melt it's absolutely insane so that is the only real change to the hero but otherwise tiny just doing tiny things next we have death prophet so death prophet similar to um, Lena in the sense that like I was, I underestimated or was a little bit wrong about how the changes would affect the hero. I thought when they changed the hero that they kind of were nerfing it into the ground. And I don't know if they actually intended for this hero to be as broken as it is. So what happened is they changed the, um, spirit siphon from being a percentage based thing to a flat damage rate. And when I saw that, I thought, oh, this is what happened to Necro back in the day, a similar kind of thing when they changed his like, uh, his passive from pure to magic and the percentages like were changed. It just, it, the reason why I say that is because Necro used to be a counter to really tanky strength heroes. And that was the same thing with, uh, with death prophet. She was a really, a good counter to tanky strength heroes like you would just drain so much hp from them it was so hard to deal with and now that it was a flat damage number yes it's better early but i thought it wasn't as good well turns out i was completely wrong because even though it's flat damage numbers that just means that you actually are just an insanely good early game hero even better than you ever were they also changed the movement speed from like just passive on the hero to also with the ultimate but it doesn't feel that bad um it doesn't feel like that much worse than i thought it was and so now this hero is insane. For the first 15 to 20 minutes of the game, like, this Spirit Siphon is way more broken. It was already broken, and now it's ridiculously broken. Like, you're healing off of creeps. You're healing off healing off of, like, 500, you know, 600 HP heroes. You're doing insane damage to them, and you're healing off of them way more than you were before. Because, obviously, when it was percentage-based, you know, if there's, like, a support that has no HP, you're not really healing that much or doing that much damage. Now you're doing a flat-based damage in the very, very beginning of the game, like, one level in this ability, and you're just, like, melting people, and you just can't die. It's absolutely insane. The hero does the same thing as it's always done. It's just even more powerful than it was before. It feels completely broken, honestly. It's it's super annoying to deal with. Next, we'll go to Leshrac. Leshrac is good for all the reasons Leshrac is good. Um, I don't think there's anything super special or new about this hero. I think the big thing is that although this hero does farm, um, it also pressures towers really well. So um, that's kind of the same thing with like DP, with Lena, with the change to the mid lane, with the removal of that small camp. Um, it hurts heroes that just want to farm, and it benefits heroes that can pressure. And so even though like Lena does like to farm, um, you know, Death Prophet, Leshrock, these heroes can farm the small camp. They also can pressure and they can dominate lanes. They can chase people down and they can like destroy that mid tower before 10 minutes very easily if they win the lane. So um, this is kind of 
how this works now from the mid lane is you're not going to farm, you're either going to pressure the tower or gank. So like Tiny is a good example of ganking. This hero just like runs around and ganks people. And the same thing can be true for Leshrac. So Leshrac can pressure, um, can gank, and can farm too if uh, if he needs to in the in the, in the jungle, um, in his main jungle, not just the small camp. So that's Leshrac. That's probably why the hero's been kind of on the upswing. And it's always, I feel like Leshrac's always been decent if you can like play the hero and you know what you're doing. Next, we have Queen of Pain. So Queen of Pain has come back into the meta. This hero was probably an F tier for a long time. It was just absolute crap. Um, it was like okay, I think, back when they when its shard was like good and they nerfed it. Um, this was maybe six months to a year ago, and now it's like it's been bad for a long time. But now, because like I said, because of the change to the mid lane where the mid lane camp is gone, that small camp is gone, Queen of Pain really benefits from that. Because early on, you really hated using your Scream of Pain. Um, or I think it's your scream, or is that the ultimate? Anyway, I forget. You you hate using your AOE scream to farm because it just takes a lot of mana and it doesn't do actually as much damage as you want it to do for farming. It just doesn't feel very good on the hero to use this to farm a small camp. It just doesn't feel good. Um, and so because of that, you just you weren't really a farming hero. You're more of a lane dominating ganker, ganking hero. And now because the mid lane no longer farms, you either lane dominate, push the tower, and gank. That's like kind of what you do. And this is what Queen of Pain does. You still have to um, be wary about certain matchups with the hero and certain ways the hero plays, but it's still very good. We're seeing pros pick it a lot, and even in pro games, um, like professional matches, it getting picked up. The next two heroes are Visage and Lone Druid. These are just kind of like cheese picks. If you know how to play Visage, not many people do, but if you know how to play Visage, he's just a really strong hero right now. Overall, we'll see him getting picked up a lot in um, competitive matches. And I think it's more of like an offlane sometimes, but it can be played mid as well. So um, if you're a good Visage player, you can totally play this hero and dominate the mid lane and push the tower. Same thing with Lone Druid. If you're a Lone Druid player, you know how to play this hero. Pretty good right now. I think it's more, I think it's almost like better as a mid, even though you do like farm, you can like really pressure the tower um, and you can still go into the jungle and farm camps and stuff like that. I think it's just pretty good right now overall. Nothing super special about these heroes. So that's A tier. Next, we're gonna look at B tier. So all of these heroes are just like kind of your run-of-the-mill mids that are pretty viable, and that's why we're starting off with Ember. Ember is, like, the best spirit right now. Um, he's just overall pretty good. I think he was the worst spirit for a little while there, and now he got buffs, and some of the other ones got nerfed. And so now Ember Spirit's just generally pretty good. Uh, look out for Ember Spirit to be, like, pretty big and popular in TI, potentially, because I feel like people just rely on spirits all the time once they get to TI. These kind of, like, these heroes that are good from the mid lane with ganking and applying pressure and you know, I think Ember's just like a classic hero that people like to play, so look for him to be pretty popular. Nothing super crazy changed about the hero, I just think he's just generally good, probably the best spirit right now. Shadow Fiend, I already talked about him in the carry tier list, but he's good as a mid laner for the same reason he's good as a carry. Uh, kind of does the same thing, it's just actually now, I almost... I almost would put Shadow Fiend in A tier if it wasn't for the fact that it's still, I don't think, the best overall. Like, it's not as good as some of these other heroes, but if you know how to play Shadow Fiend and pressure with the Shadow Rays, it's just absolutely insane. Like, the fact that it slows now, it, you feel like Batrider, like, if you get hit with a couple of these raises, not only are you taking insane damage, but, I mean, I played against an SF uh, the first time before I even, like, kind of realized, oh, wait, they changed it um, right after the patch. He basically hit me with a couple raises, and then I, uh, like, he pushed the the lane into me, hit me with a couple raises, pushed the lane into me, and then I'm like running under tower, I'm like, oh wait, I'm super slow, he literally just dives tower and hits me with three more and I just die, and I can't get away, like I can't run away, because I'm literally so slow and he just has like six mangoes, like it's so hard to deal with this hero, um, it feels impossible to deal with him if you know what you're doing, um, as a shadow fiend you can really dominate lanes and then he just becomes the same shadow fiend, I would almost always go right click build, but I mean you can still go magic build, I just don't think it's that good. Next we have Pango. Pango's just Pango. I think he's just almost always going to be semi-viable. Uh, he's probably better from the mid lane than off lane just because off lane he just doesn't lane very well. But mid lane, like, you can just always secure your farm. You're almost always going to be getting your levels, and then you can obviously gank the side lanes if you need to, or you can easily gank mid, you know, the, the mid lane with all the different places to bounce off of is one of the best places to gank from. And then Pangolier's pretty good late game, as always. So, just get, uh, decent hero, decent Pangolier patch. Next is Invoker. Invoker's kind of been on the rise. They've been buffing this hero in small ways here and there. I'm not an Invoker player, so I don't know all the specifics about, like, why this hero's a little bit better than it was, but I just know that in general, especially because this hero never really liked to farm the small camp. Like, it's not really what the hero does. So because of that, I think it's the biggest thing, plus some small buffs to the hero, and the fact that Faceless Void is obviously the best carry, and you get ags, and you just delete people out of the game. Like, you get a chrono on, like, two heroes, and they're just dead. Um... Because of those factors and the fact that the like the hero likes to dominate the lane and doesn't really farm the small camp, I think that just makes Invoker a lot better. And so we're seeing a lot more of the hero. I'm not putting him in A tier, although he could potentially be there. Look for him to maybe be really popular in TI. I just don't think he's 
I, I just put him in B tier personally and based on the win rate and stuff and how I feel about him, but look for him to become more popular. He's definitely on the rise. He could be very, very good right now. So TA, I'm putting in TA in B tier, even though TA is a farming hero. Um, TA was one of these heroes that farms, but doesn't farm like relying on that small camp. Really, she actually farms the ancients and like even more of the jungle when they're stacks. So the small camp being deleted didn't hurt her as much as some of the other heroes that like to farm. But then the other thing is she's actually very underrated as a lane dominator from the mid lane because, you know, at level six, when you place all your traps, if they don't have sentries and you can place them behind the tower and all this kind of stuff, you can run a lot of these heroes down that don't have mobility and can't get away from you. Um, you obviously get a lot of your, you know, a lot more levels there. So you have a lot more damage early on than a lot of other heroes. So, uh, this hero is definitely viable from the mid lane in pubs. Now, it's obviously not like a super big pro pick to have mid TA, but I've definitely seen it. I've seen it work, and I think it can dominate lanes more than people are really aware of. They honestly think of TA as a farm hero, and you can still do that, I think. You can still go to the jungle and farm stacks, and uh, like I said, you can dominate the lane more than you ever, uh, not more than you ever have, but you can still do that as a TA when people don't really expect it. Next, we have Dawnbreaker. I think this hero is just viable as a mid. I still think this hero, even though they nerfed it slightly, I think the nerfs that happened to the hero with the... Um the nerfs to like the mobility on the hero early on are the least significant in mid. So it's still a decent mid. I think it's still a decent carry off lane, even a support. It just overall, it's not as good as it once was, but I still think it's totally viable from the mid lane. Huskar has kind of been on the upswing, and now because of the lack of like farming from the mid lane, this here is all about dominating the lane. So if you can dominate the lane, you just win the lane and you just pressure the tower, and like they the mid can't go back to the lane, so the mid has to gank. And if the mid is getting crushed because you you know killed them twice in the lane, then it's hard for them to even gank and all that kind of stuff. So I think mainly this here is now viable because dominating mid is so important. So if you know how to play Huskar, you can dominate the mid lane, you can win a lot of these matchups, um, you can be good. Uh, playing this hero in the mid lane is definitely viable. And then the same thing can be said for Viper. Viper is kind of a mid lane dominator, doesn't love to like farm uh, the small camp when it was available. I mean, obviously you can get a, a point in your W, but usually this hero is all about just like, you know, booting people out of lane, being super annoying and harassing people. And so it's the same kind of thing. I think that makes Viper pretty viable. This hero still has a problem of like falling off. Like, what do you do? After like 10, 15 minutes, like what do you really do? But um, as long as, you, I think if you buy some like Boots of Travel build, you get a little bit more mobility. Like I think this hero is still definitely viable, especially in pubs. Next, we have Primal Beast. Primal Beast has kind of come back into the meta with some of the buffs. I still think it's not the best. I really only put it here because I saw like the statistics and the win rate and I thought it was pretty decent. And I think like before it was broken and I, even though it was nerfed, I thought like people were undervaluing it in general, but I don't know that it's back to like, it's obviously not back to what it was, but it is back in some ways. People are still picking it. If you go to Dota 2 Pro Tracker, it's still a pretty popular mid. I still think it's viable. I think the Ags is pretty good. It looks broken sometimes. Um, so just keep that in mind. I still think it's not like, it, it's not where it was, but it's, it's definitely a viable hero um, because of that. So the next like four heroes we have are kind of cheese picks a little bit. I guess you would say Sniper's not necessarily a cheese pick, but he kind of is. And the big thing about this hero is even though in the side lane as a carry, you're kind of going to max shrapnel still push out the lane farm. Sniper now, because of the changes to this hero, he's now able to be this lane dominating hero where you don't even put any points in shrapnel. Honestly, you just don't have shrapnel in the lane and you just outrange heroes you just click your range ability to just perma headshot them and they just like can't approach the wave your attack animation is also insanely good you have good damage and now you can uh, you just out lane people and so obviously after the laning stage is sort of a similar problem with vipers now you have the sniper mid that doesn't have shrapnel like what do you do well um I did make a uh, guide on the hero recently, but basically you want to be like kind of running around and fighting with your team. Now, obviously the problem with that is it relies on your team to actually be running around and fighting with the sniper. I mean, like, so it does rely on that. So keep in mind, it's probably not the best for pubs, but you can definitely dominate lanes and then you can take the tower. You can kill the enemy mid um, and you can win games off of the back of that. It's just that mid game, this hero can be a little bit more difficult to play uh, from the mid lane. If you don't have any shrapnel, you can't push out the waves and farm that kind of stuff. And if your team's not playing around, you can feel really bad. Next is OD. This is kind of like a spam cheesy pick, but it's a little bit similar to the fact uh, So a lot of the other heroes. What I said is that this hero is not really about farming the small camp. It's all about, you know, getting your meteor hammer and then pressuring mid. And so you can do that really easily. I really like to play this hero from the mid lane. It's kind of fun for me. I know OD spammer, OD players, kind of annoying to play against. I get it, but it is kind of fun to just astral people and hammer them and then like take the tower super early. So this hero is all about like taking all the towers, you know, getting your hammer, dominating the lane, taking all the towers. And then once there's a little bit of an awkward point after you've taken all the outer towers, like you kind of just want to farm and you become this pretty decent right click hero uh, with your, obviously with your orb and stuff like that. 
later into the game. So this here is pretty viable, kind of a cheese pick, but still pretty good. Next one is Rude Mother, decent mid lane. Uh, if you look at the stats, it's like better mid lane. I still don't think it's the best, but it's obviously a cheese pick. It's not as good as like Visage or Lone Druid, but pretty cheesy. If you know how to play it, it can still work. And then Arc Warden, I think Arc Warden's actually a better mid. Personally, I believe it's a better mid than carry, but um, it, it functions like a carry from the mid lane. You can dominate some mid matchups if you know what you're doing with your uh, with your Spark Wraith and that kind of stuff. It can be very annoying to go against, and I see it just crush games sometimes. So that's, uh, that's B tier. Next, we're going to look at C tier. So the big thing about C tier here is this has a lot of heroes that were good, like last patch or two patches ago, and they just fell off a cliff. So Puck, probably the best mid hero of last patch. Kind of fell off a cliff, got nerfed a lot, map changes, like it, it likes to farm the small camp, um, doesn't really pressure the tower as much, so more it's more of a ganking hero, so it can still do that, it's still viable in doing that. But the small camp definitely hurt this hero, uh, the removal of that, and also the nerfs in general just make the hero not as good. Same thing with Void Spirit. Void Spirit has been very viable for a long time. I had this hero pretty low in my last tier list for last patch, and I was wrong about that. This hero, even though the win rate didn't look very good, it was probably A tier, and I even I put it like B or C. So it was probably like A tier last patch, if not S tier. It was like up there with Puck. It was getting picked a lot. But now officially, I, I saw it on the downtrend, and I figured if it was even still popular like last patch, it was going to get nerfed again. So now this is officially not a dead hero. Like it's still pickable. It's still no. I think every spirit hero is always sort of pickable, so it is decent. Um, if you're a good void spirit player, you can still pick it, but it's just not nearly as strong as it once was. It's really not as popular in the pros. I don't think it's getting picked up at all in actual competitive matches that much, if I if I recall. Um, it's just I, I just don't think it's really viable anymore for a lot of different reasons. And then Zeus. Zeus is kind of similar to these other heroes. Zeus was really, really popular as a mid last patch and support. I was think I think it's still a decent support. It's actually still a decent mid. It's just that obviously you don't pressure the tower literally at all with this hero. Um, so you're mainly about farming, and that small camp really hurts the hero. Now you obviously can still gank with like TP, or you can still use your ult to affect the side lanes. That still all happens. But just the just the fact that like the XP uh, nerf happened in general, so you're not getting as many levels, and then you're not sm farming the small camp. You actually have to go all the way into the jungle, which you're slow in general now, to walk into the jungle to farm those camps. It's just It just hurts the hero a lot. Still sort of viable, but just not as good. Storm um, was really good like two, three patches ago, whenever it was, like six months ago with the Null Talisman thing. Got nerfed into Oblivion. Now is sort of back a little bit, but just still pretty bad. I just don't think this hero is all that viable. Still can be okay in the right game, but just not that great. Still does Storm Spear things, nothing special. Kunkka, similar kind of uh, thing where this hero loved to farm the small camp. I mean, you're just, you're just like this farming hero that just went around and ganking. You don't push the tower at all, so you just gank and farm, and now you don't really farm, so you're relying on ganking, and if that doesn't work out, you're kind of screwed, because if you can't kill anybody, then, I mean, you can go in the jungle and farm, but it's just not the best. He really loved the small camp, so that's why he's down here. Pugna been on the rise a little bit. He was really bad. He was like a good support a few patches ago. Then got nerfed into Oblivion. And now he's a little bit on the rise again because he can pressure the mid-tower. And that's one of the big things. You can pressure the mid-tower. So that's really good now. He also has gotten some buffs. So now he's more viable. Um, but he's just still not the best. Because like if you're not able to pressure the mid-tower for whatever reason because of the matchups, then it can feel really bad. Because he's not like the best ganker early. He obviously doesn't farm the best. So you're like 100% reliant on pushing towers. And then Meepo, probably the worst of the cheese picks. He's getting buffs. He's getting changes. He's sort of more viable. He's not like F tier or really bad, but um, he's just still, this this hero is still kind of like just a dead hero. Like unless you're a Meepo player, and even if you are, like just nobody picks this hero anymore. Then lastly, or not lastly, but uh, at the bottom of the list, other than just completely unpickable heroes, we have D tier, which is Pudge. Just not really a mid hero right now. Uh, it, I mean, it's still viable. I put it down here. I know I put it like A and carry. It can, it's probably better than D, but it's just not the mid hero. I don't think, I think mid is probably its worst position. Nah, I mean, that's support is five position is its worst position. I'll say that. But of the cores, I think mid is probably its worst position, but it's still viable. I mean, you still get your levels. You can still get some farm. Obviously, you don't like that. That small camp is gone. That's a big problem for Pudge, but you can still do it. It's just not the best, I would say. DK, even though you farm the, or you push the tower, I just think this hero's kind of fallen off a cliff for a lot of, in a lot of ways. We saw like Alliance pick it a couple times first pick. It just, it did not work out. It's very bad right now. It just feels so underwhelming, honestly. Skywrath Mage, very like good ganking pressure hero, but you don't like farming and you don't pressure the tower. Like you just don't do much other than gank. So if you don't get like snowball with this hero, it just feels really bad. Necro, very farm centric, doesn't pressure the tower, not the best at ganking, like you can gank with your ult, I guess, but you're really all about like killing people and then farming, and obviously the small camp killed the hero from the mid lane, so I think that's why it's down here. Then Wind Ranger overall has just been getting nerfed because Seb plays it as a support, and then it keeps getting nerfed, and then overall, I mean, 
it's kind of one of these heroes that it just it's sort of at a weird spot you don't really do anything better than any other hero you're just kind of you know middle of the road if you're a good wind ranger player maybe it's viable but and it's getting some small buffs here and there but you're really all just about single target killing somebody and it just doesn't feel as good as it once was when they had the ags give you like haste and you could do it a bunch and it was just super good but um they have been buffing it, so look for it to be a little bit better, but still just not super viable. And then lastly, we have F tier. So these are all heroes that farm, if you can see. Keeper of the Light was busted last patch because it just farmed so fast. Small Cam is no longer there, so you don't stack it. You don't get as much farm. Just not nearly as good. Doesn't pressure the tower at all. Um, so just really not a mid anymore, not viable at all. Gyrocopter, just not really a core anymore. Honestly, it's just like a four position, to be honest. Um, just, again, a farming hero, not good. Magnus, farming hero, just not good. And then Alchemist, again, from the mid lane, especially farming hero, not good. Um, so you can see there's a trend here. Any hero that benefited from that small camp got nerfed, and any hero that farms a lot is pretty much not viable, and any hero that likes to push the tower or gank is now viable. So that's pretty much the long and short of mid lane, and that is my mid lane tier list for patch 7.32b. As always, guys, like, comment, subscribe, all of those kinds of things. If you like the video, consider going to my Patreon and supporting me there, or if you want coaching, I also offer that at Patreon as well. So as always, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.